Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for the blood. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood you shed on Calvary for me, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, God. We just thank you this morning. Lord, thank you for every blessing, Lord, that you've provided for us on this morning, God. Thank you for the use of the activities of our limbs on this morning. God, we just say thank you, Lord, because we know, God, that it's in you that we live and that we move and that we have our being, oh God. And beside you, God, we can do nothing. So we just say thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With all that is within us, God, we say thank you. And God, as we come before your throne this morning, God, we just ask you to forgive us, God, for every sin, Lord. Forgive us for every error, oh God. Forgive us for every way, Lord, every thought, God, that we had, oh God, that displeased you. We just ask you to forgive us right now, Lord. Clean us up, God. Make us vessels of honor on this morning, oh God. And we say thank you, God. Thank you, God, for forgiving us, God. For only you, God, can forgive sins, God. And we just say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And Lord, as we come this morning, we just ask you, God, to be in our midst on this morning. Lord, we say have your way in your service on this morning, God. But Lord, we're not here, oh God, for what we want to do, God. But we're here, oh God, to hear from you, oh God. We're here, God, to dwell in your presence, God. We are here, God, to praise you corporately, oh God. We're here, God, to bless your holy name, God. Oh God, and most importantly, God, we're here to hear a word from you. And so, Lord, we just say welcome, God. Welcome into this place, oh God. Welcome, oh God, into these broken vessels, oh God. Oh God, we know that you desire to abide in our praises, God. So we send up a praise before you this morning, oh God. We say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless your wonderful name. Oh, how great thou art in all the earth, oh God. And Lord, we just ask you now to look upon each and every family, God, that's represented here this morning, God. Look upon each and every one that's yet on their way, God. Bring them in, Lord, this morning with hearts and minds, God, that are stayed on you, Father God. We ask you, Lord, to look into the hospital rooms, oh God. Lord, look into the nursing home rooms, God. Look into the jail houses and the prisons, oh God. Look into every place, oh God, where there is a soul, oh God, on this morning, God. And we just ask you, oh God, to allow your spirit, oh God, your, the presence of your spirit, oh God, to be in those places, oh God, where we cannot be, oh God. Allow your spirit to be where our eyes cannot even see, God, but you know everything, oh God. And we just ask you, God, to be a healer, God, be a provider, God, be a deliverer, oh God, be a comforter, oh God, to all of those, oh God, who need you on this morning, God. And we all need you this morning, God. We all need you this morning, God. And we're reaching for you this morning, God, for you said in your word, God, and we draw nigh unto you, God, that you will draw nigh unto us. Oh God, so with all that is within us, God, we're reaching for you this morning, God. We're drawing nigh unto you, God. We're coming before your presence, oh God. Oh God, so that you can be a blessing in our midst, oh God. Oh God, so that you can do what you do, oh God. And that's to take care of your people, oh God. You say we extend praises, oh God, that you will inhabit our praises, oh God. So we praise you this morning, God, and we bless you, God. Oh God, and thank you, Lord, for being in our midst on this morning. Lord, we love you today. God, we don't take anything for granted, God, but we're careful to give your name the, the glory and the honor and the praise that is due. Lord, bless each home, Lord, that's assigned to Mount Olive Church of God in Christ, Lord. Bless those, Lord, who even are assigned, oh God, that, know, that don't know it yet, God. But bless them, God, that their paths will lead them, oh God, to Mount Olive Church of God in Christ, to your throne, oh God, your throne of grace and mercy. Lord, we thank you, we love you today, and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name that we do. Say amen, amen, and amen.
be reading you from the 10th chapter of the book of Romans, 1 to 11. Brother, my heart desire in prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of, the, of God, right? going about to accept their own righteousness and have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law. For righteousness is every one that believes. For Moses described the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth the deed of the thing shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thy heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring down Christ from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ from the dead. But what says it? The word is not thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that he that that the that, that he is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt con con shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, Whosoever believes, whosoever believes on him shall not perish. Shall not perish. The Lord had a blessing unto the reading of his word.
What's his name? What's his name? I think they even spelled it. How they spell his name? that he holds all power where? In his hands. We have two powerful songs this morning. One about the blood and one about Jesus. There's no other name that we can be saved except by the name of what? They tell me that devils will tremble when they hear the sound of what? Jesus. He may believe but he's going to tremble. Amen. thus far. As we know, today is our Communion Sunday, so we thank God for that. We're preparing our hearts to be able to receive communion today, amen? Amen. we got plenty of time. If you, don't, if you walked in today, you didn't feel worthy. God specializes in a lot of things. He can change your situation, amen? He can change it so he can make it worthy receive communion on this day, man. Amen. Amen. As we get ready to go further to our service, we just want to welcome all of those who are watching our services online today, this first Sunday, December, December 4th. Thank God for you being here. As we always invite you to come into our church when you're in town, or if you're in town, if you don't have a home church, feel free to come by 1020 Ripley Street, Davenport, Iowa. Sunday services at 1130. We have Bible study on Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock. You can call in at 667-770-1405 and press pound 255-048 to get into that. And if for whatever reason, on those rare occasions, you have a problem getting in that 1405, Try 1450. The last week I couldn't get in on 1405, so I had to go in on 1450. So we thank God that we got two ways to get in, amen? Amen. Amen. But the primary number is that 1405. Then again, come back and be with us on Friday evening at 7 o'clock to be a part of our um, service on Friday night. Now, this Friday night, the, uh, I believe it's going to be the 9th of December, we'll be having our church. Christmas program here at the church. Amen? So that's going to be held at 6.30 on Friday night of this week. There's a sign-up sheet out there for those to participate, bring something in. I believe Deacon Thomas, he's not going to cook. Let's say amen. <laughs> but he's going to bring in some pop. Amen? We thank God for the pop. So, amen. It's a blessing that he's not going to cook for. Amen, Deacon Thomas. <laughs> but we do want everybody to come out and have a good time. We always enjoy that night, amen? Amen. amen. It's a good night of fellowship. It's just having a good time. and Yes, like I said, good, good time for fellowship. And as we're into the season of Christmas, the birth of our Savior, our children, didn't they do a good job last Sunday? be preparing the children to present a Christmas, I don't want to say program, but service, and the first rehearsal will be on next Saturday, the 10th of December, at 1.30 here at the church at 1020 Ripley Street. I'd like to see all the children we see here today, and those who are not here, be a part of that rehearsal. And we're going to come back again on the 17th of December to do the same thing at 1.30, so come out, bring the children out. Let them be a part of this service because they are a part of Mount Olive, amen? Amen. And then, are there any other announcements? I, oh, let's not forget, uh, every second and third Sunday of the month, we will have rehearsal for choir rehearsal for the youth after services. I, I want to keep that out there. Keep it out there so we can continue to have our youth out there because young people last Sunday just did an outstanding job. Touch my soul, amen? Amen. So, are there any other announcements at this time? 
if not, we're going to prepare our hearts to receive the word of God on this first Sunday of December. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. So after we hear from our choir this afternoon, we're going to ask if our assistant pastor can present our pastor to bring forth the word of God. So let's say amen. Amen.
us to see, dear God, this day, dear God, that you have allowed us to come out one more time, dear God, to worship you in spirit and in truth, dear God. This day, dear God, that you have allowed us to come and to receive a word from you, dear God. Because you said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of your mouth. God, we said thank you this morning for your word. God, we trusted and believed in you, dear God, that it will fall on good ground, dear God, and it will accomplish, dear God, that that you have sent it forth to do, dear God. And God, now God asks you to let me decrease and let your people see your son, Jesus. We will forever give you the glory. In your son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We truly thank God for this day. Thank God for salvation. Amen. And we thank God for this time of the season. Amen. And thank God once again for our sister pastor. Amen. Thank God for our church mother, our sister church mother. Thank God for the deacons, amen. We thank God for our usher, amen, on this post this morning. We hadn't seen him for a few Sundays, amen, but we thank God for him, amen. Brother Warren, amen. We thank God for him, amen. Thank God for the saints of God, amen. And that being said, amen, we just thank God for each and every one of you, amen, each and every one of you, and I thank God for my lovely wife, amen, Evangelist Boom, amen. Thank God she put up with me these many years, but I truly thank God for her, amen, because it's not easy being a wife of a pastor, amen, because many times she has to, amen, surrender, amen, with things that she may want to do, amen, but the Lord may be calling me to go and visit the sick, amen, and we may have wanted a demo, amen, to take out on a nice dinner or something, but someone is sick, amen, and we have to go and check on God's people, and I thank her, amen, for that sacrifice, amen, that she makes, because God called me, amen, as the pastor, he didn't call her, so she has to really sacrifice a lot, and I don't take it lightly, amen, so thank God for you, Evangelist Boone, amen. Saints of God, if you have your Bible with you, because we don't want to be long before you today, if you have your Bible with you, amen. We're going to be coming from Isaiah this morning. Isaiah, the seventh chapter, verse 14. Isaiah, the ninth chapter, verse 6. And Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, verses 1 through 4. 
the first two verses, amen, that we will read, amen, just want to let us, amen, stay in this, this season, amen, of Christmas, amen, so just reading these just for our hearing, because our scripture text and our theme this morning actually would come from Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. But Isaiah, if you have your Bibles with you, you will find these words recorded in the King James Version. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. God is with us. Isaiah 9 and 6 read, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and he and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And our theme scripture, Isaiah 53, verses 1 through 4. Who have believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He have no form, nor comeliness. And when we should see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrow. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Once again, we truly thank God for this day that God has made. Are we glad to be in the house of the Lord today? If you're glad to be here, just wave your hand, amen. I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning, amen. And I thank God, amen. This is our first Sunday in the last month of this year. This year has gone by pretty fast. Amen. Seemed like we were just, amen, in church giving our theme for this year. And now we almost, amen, come back, amen. We got three more Sundays in this year. Amen. And we'll be on a new year if God delay his coming and continue to allow us to be here. Amen. And I thank many of us that are sitting in here this morning. We all can thank God for bringing us a long way this year, amen. Have God brought us a long way? God has brought, truly brought us a long way. Amen. And do we believe, amen, that God will continue, amen, to allow his will to be manifested in our lives, amen. I know he brought us a long way, amen, but are you continuing to believe God will, will be manifested in your life. Amen. I thank God. Amen. Because I truly believe, amen, that God has brought me a long way. Amen. And I'm still trusting and believing God that his will will be manifested in my life. Each and every day, amen, that is my desire, amen, that God, your will will be manifested in my life. Each and every day, amen, I will draw closer to you. I will come to know you more, amen, and more. So I just thank God for the scriptures, amen, and thank God for his love, amen, because here we see, amen, this passage of scripture, we see Isaiah, God allowed Isaiah to look through the lens of time and record something about Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, our Lord, 
our Savior. When we look at Isaiah 53, this is what we see. God allows Isaiah to look through the lens of time and to see something about Jesus. And when I looked, amen, and God prompted my spirit, amen, and showed me what he allowed Isaiah to look through the lens of time about, amen, it made me think about the day and hour that we are in. Because during this time of the year, many will celebrate Christmas. Let's just be honest. Many will celebrate Christmas. You and I know Christmas is supposed to be, amen, a day that we set aside to be Christ's birthday, amen. And many will celebrate, amen, Christmas. And why is this so important, amen, when God allowed me to look, amen, just like he allowed Isaiah to look through the lens of time. God allowed me to look and see something. He said, do you know many people are going to celebrate Christmas in spite of the pain and sorrow they have had to go through this year. Many people are going to celebrate Christmas in spite of the pain and sorrow that they have gone through this year. And to be honest, many of us have gone through some difficult time this year. We don't have to look at the next person, amen. We can look at ourselves, amen, and say many of us have gone through some difficult time this year. We have had some sorrow. We have had some pain, amen. Many of us, amen, this year have had to say bye to loved ones who have transitioned into eternity. Many of us have loved ones who are sick. Many of us have had loved ones who have had to spend time even in the hospital this year. Many of us, amen, have loved ones, amen, have had to receive bad news about their health. Many of us, amen, we know of those who have lost their job, amen, the means of being able to take care of themselves, amen. Not only that, amen, we see even on the TV how many have lost their life savings or what we would call their retirement funds. Many are dealing, amen, with the incarceration of our children. Mm -hmm. Many are struggling just to have life basic needs met. And when we think about the basic needs, amen, we think about food, clothes, and shelter. And each time I go to that grocery store, <laughs> I wonder how much, uh, how long can they continue to raise prices Amen. and expect people to be able to just have the basic need mm -hmm. of food to sustain life? Yes, sir, sure. But do you know, in spite of that, many are going to celebrate Christmas this year. And what God allowed me to see in this passage of scripture, he said, I need you to see something, the other one. In verse 3. See, you think y'all are going through so much. But he said, read Isaiah. And notice what he said in verse 3. He is despised and rejected of men. But then he said, he will be also a man of sorrow. In other words, Jesus himself will be a man associated with sorrow. He will be a man associated with sorrow. And you got to think about this, because God allowed Isaiah to look through the lens of time. This way before Jesus came on the scene, way before Jesus was even born, way before Jesus, amen, preached the gospel, way before he healed anyone, amen, in his 
natural ministry, amen. And he allowed him to look through the lens of time and say he will be associated, amen, and will be known as a man of sorrow. I said, thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Because if Jesus would be known as a man of sorrow, saints, what was God really trying to tell you and I? God was really trying to tell you and I. I want you to know Christ knows about your sorrow. He knows about your pain. And he came to bear our sorrow. Hallelujah. He came to bear our sorrow. This is why God allowed him, amen, to be associated as a man of sorrow. The Bible informs us because Christ is a man of sorrow, mm -hmm. Christ experienced sorrow. And he is able to comfort all of us who are in pain and experiencing sorrow. How many of us this morning in here can say they are in pain? Amen. How many of us, amen, can say we're experiencing some sorrow, amen? How many of us, amen, when we be honest, you ain't got to raise your hand, amen? But God wanted you and I to know that his son, Jesus, will be associated with as a man of sorrow. And as I continue to look, why would Jesus be known as a man of sorrow? They tell me the greatest pain and the greatest sorrow that anyone can experience in life is to be rejected by those whom you love. To be rejected by those whom you love. Yeah. Look at our world. How many of our children have been rejected by their parents? Mm -hmm. And we wonder why we got so much stuff going on in this day and hour. How many elderly who have taken all that they had to support their children and ensure that their children had a good life. And now that they are at the point where they are needed, they are being rejected by those whom they sacrificed so much for. Some of them won't even come and visit them when they put them in nursing homes and things. They drop them off and the next time they see them is when they contact them and tell them that their loved one has transitioned into eternity. They forget about that person who sacrificed, amen, so they could go to college and get a college education. They forget about the one who walked around, amen, with their feet running out of their shoes so they could have, amen, on nice shoes and everything, amen. But we see this in this day and hour. And they said this is the greatest pain or sorrow that a person can go through when you have been rejected by those whom you love. How many of us have been rejected, amen, by friends? Mm -hmm. Amen, someone, amen, that you call a friend. And when you really needed that person, the person wasn't there for you. Didn't that hurt you? But the Bible tells us, when we look at this man of sorrow, mm -hmm. it said this man was despised, mm -hmm. and he was rejected of men. This man of sorrow, Jesus, amen, because that's our theme, amen, Christ, a man of sorrow. He would despise, amen. When I look at this word despise, he would look down upon with disrespect. How many of us, amen, have been looked down upon? How many of us have been told that we would never be nothing? How many of us have been told that you are a complete failure? But here Jesus said he would be a man of sorrow. He was rejected. When we think about rejected, amen, Jesus was refused, amen, 
people refused to accept him. They refused to believe him. And how do I know? Because scripture tells me this. Say he came unto his own, and his own received him not. In other words, what the Bible is letting us know, amen, Jesus' chosen people, Israel, mm -hmm. rejected him. Amen. But if you think that's bad, amen, because I like to bring it home to us, amen, this is, amen, the season, amen, of Christmas. So I'm bringing it home. How many heard of this story here? Your parents ain't nobody but a carpenter. Ain't that ain't, ain't that's that carpenter song over there? Amen. I believe that's how Matthew wrote it. Matthew wrote it like this here. Is not this the carpenter song? Mm -hmm. Is not his mother called Mary and his brother James and Joseph and Simeon and Judas? Is his sister, are they not all with us? Which they have not had this man all these things. Mm -hmm. And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country yeah. and in his own house. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. In other words, amen, those in his household, amen, those who in his hometown, amen, they rejected who he was. Amen. Think about us. Many of us, amen, we're being rejected in our own homes, amen. We're being rejected in our own home. Jesus was rejected by the religious leader. Now today we will have communion, amen, but because Jesus was bringing in, amen, the dispensation of grace, he said the religious leaders, they rejected him. Amen. But when I look at not only his rejection, amen, because I told you he would despise. One thing I think, amen, that Jesus, amen, it had to really cause him some grief, had to really cause him some pain, amen. When they declared that Jesus was casting out devils, amen, through Beelzebub. Don't you think that, don't you know that had to cause him some pain? Yeah. You saying that I'm casting out a devil through a devil. And that's when he let us know a house that is divided, it won't stand, amen. It cannot stand, amen. But I look at even in this day and hour, because I told you I'm going to bring it home. Yeah. When we talk about rejection, do you know many people are still today rejecting Christ's love? Amen. Men are still rejecting Christ's love. Because he tells us in his word, he said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And I changed the word from they to you because I want to make it personal. I know in the Bible it said they, amen. But he have come, amen, so that you and I might have life, amen. And he said not just life, but I want to give you more abundant life, amen. In other words, amen, I don't only want to give you life in this present world, but I want to give you life in the world to come for eternity, amen. I want to give you abundant life. And then when I talk about rejecting his love, think about that when he said, greater love have no man than this. That I lay down my life for his friend. We're talking about Jesus now. Hallelujah. The rejection of the gospel message. The rejection of the truth of the gospel message. This is going on right today. Amen. And this is why the Bible tells us, amen, Isaiah, God allowed Isaiah to look through time 
in dependence on Jesus that he would be a man of sorrow. He would know what it's like to be sorrow, amen. He would know what it's like to have pain, just like you and I, amen. But the thing about it, amen, when we look at Jesus, none of our pain and sorrow can compare to what he went through for you and I. Cannot even compare. But you think about it in this day and hour, as much as going on around us, how many people are rejecting truth? How many people are rejecting truth? Mm. How many people believe that there is another way to the heavenly father? Mm -hmm. When he had told us in his word, for there is none other name under the heaven uh -huh. given among men whereby we must be saved. Hallelujah. There is no other name, amen, given under the heaven whereby we can be saved. We're talking about sorrow and pain because he was a man of sorrow. That scripture went on to say he was acquainted with grief. And when we think about grief, amen, we think about deep sorrow and pain. And I think about even this year, because I say God has brought us a long way. How do I know God has brought us a long way? Because how many of us, if we had had you to raise your hand, can say you had to share some tears this year. You'd have had to share some tears of sorrow. You'd have had to share some tears of pain, amen. But Jesus, a man of sorrow, he can relate to it, amen. Some of us, amen, we shed the tears, amen. We shed the tears, amen, when loved ones transition into eternity. We shed the tears, amen, when our children disappointed us. We shed the tears of grief, amen, when our dreams, amen, were shattered. We have had to share some tears. But I thank God through it all. He have brought us to this point where we can still celebrate Christmas. We can celebrate his birth. Amen. We can celebrate his birth. And I thank God for it, amen, because you and I have to be willing to understand that Jesus, a man of sorrow, he's acquainted with our grief. How do I know he was acquainted with our grief? Amen. There's many passages of scripture that tells us about his grief, but the one that I'm going to refer to Amen. It's when Jesus himself, amen, began to pray on probably the worst day of his humanity. And that was the day he was in Gethsemane when he needed his brothers. He needed them to stand with him and just pray because he was getting ready to face the cross and death not for himself but he was about to face it for you and I he was about to face it so we could be redeemed amen and they said he was in so much agony amen that it said his sweat was as it were drops of blood falling down to the ground you let me know that's not some deep sorrow that's not some deep pain. When you're sending your prayer to God so hard that even your sweat begin to appear like it's blood, you in some pain and you in some sorrow. Amen. But I thank God. I thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah. Because in spite of that, amen, when we look at all that he went through, and I look.
look and I began to think, mother, in my deepest sorrow and in my deepest pain, I began to look at the throne of grace because the Bible said that when I'm in my deepest pain and sorrow, it said that I can obtain mercy. I can find grace to help me in the time I need. And see, sometimes in my greatest hour of pain and sorrow, the only place I can go to is the throne of grace. I understand now what made Paul happy when he heard his father let him know. Guess what? I'd have came to you three times with this issue. But then his father replied and said, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Hallelujah. Think about it, saints of God. sorrow and pain. The Bible lets us know you and I, we can come to the throne boldly and find grace. Hallelujah. Somebody tell me that's that unmerited favor. Amen. That unmerited favor that Jesus gonna step in for us. And I thank God for it. But mother, I'm about to close on this one right here. Because the last thing I see in that scripture, when we're talking about this man of sorrow, because I see so many people in this situation, in this day and hour. Some of you may be sitting in the house of the Lord this morning. Some of you may be feeling like you all alone, amen. Because this is Jesus, amen. When, I, when God allowed Isaiah, to look through the lens of time. This is how Isaiah recorded it. He said, we hid as it were our face from him. In other words, when we really break it down what Isaiah was trying to let you and I know, Jesus experienced sorrow because he went, amen, alone, amen. Jesus experienced loneliness. Many of us, you know today, we feel alone. Many of us feel like giving up. Many of us feel like nobody cares about us. Many of us feel like nobody loves us. Many of us feel like nobody cares what's going to happen to us. Many of us feel like throwing in the towel. But Jesus himself was a man of sorrow who experienced loneliness. when he began to pray. Don't you know he had to pray alone because he took those fellas with him and he told them, hey amen, can you just stay up with me just one hour? I ain't asking y'all for nothing that's out of the ordinary. I done took care of you for three and a half years and now I just need you for one hour. When it came tax season, I'm reminded how he told him, 
to go down to the fish. Amen. And then, amen. When the fish get there, amen, open his mouth. When you open his mouth, he gonna have your text in there and mine. Go pay Caesar what is due to Caesar. Hallelujah. You think about, amen, these fellas who was fishermen, these fellas who was a tax collector, fellow was a physician, but for three years, three years, they walked with Jesus, and all of a sudden, Jesus, one of his worst days in humanity, just needed the fellas to watch with him for one hour. But then he said, that's okay, because I know who I can go to. And guess what? I know he's up. And I know, amen, he'll listen to me. Because he prayed unto his father. Not only that, when we think about it, and I say this, because we see so many of our children are going through, we see so many of our children are attempting suicide because they feel alone. They feel like nobody cares. But do you know it's not even our children? It's happening at all ages where people feel all alone. But Jesus knows what it's like to be alone. Because even in the Garden of Gethsemane as he prayed, and after that third prayer, he told them to sleep on. But as they were sleeping, he would have to go along again. Yeah. Because when they came to arrest him, the Bible said all the disciples forsook him and fled. Yeah, you tell me he don't know what it's like to be alone? Jesus don't know what it's like to be alone. He know what it's like to be alone. But the one that gets me, Jesus felt he was so alone that the Bible tells us about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. They're one. But Jesus fell so alone when he was on that cross yeah. that he looked up to his father and said, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? You talking about Jesus who was with God in the beginning. Jesus who are we God? When they had the plan of redemption for man, now he's on the cross and he feels alone and said, my God, my God, why has that forsaken me? You know why he felt like that? Because on that cross, he knew something that separated him from his father. What's your sin and my sin? The Bible said he became sin. So while he's up there, amen, hanging on the cross, he's contemplating in his mind, my God, my God, the only thing that you say is sin. And you don't forsake me. Hallelujah. You think about that. The one time recorded in Scripture, my God, my God. 
Because what he, he knew what God was saying. He said, God, you're looking at the sinner, Pastor Boone. You're not looking at your son, Jesus. You're looking at the sinner, Pastor Boone. You're looking at the sinner, Deacon Thomas. You're looking at the sinner, Deacon Ross. You're looking at the sinner. Because I'm saying all this. Jesus was a man of sorrow. He felt alone. And he was lonely. So you and I would never have to be alone. Do you know in scripture? He promised you and I.
Because God, even now, we at your throne of grace, God. We at your throne of grace. And God, we need your help. God, you know, many of us, God, we have experienced so much pain and so much sorrow, God. Now we're at your throne of grace, God. We come in, God, because you tell us we can come, God, and we can find help. Help us today, Lord. Help us. God, many of us, God, we experience loneliness, dear God. We feel alone, God. We feel like no one cares about us, dear God. But God, you let us know that you will never leave us nor will you forsake us. And you'll be with us all the way, even until the ends of the world, God. God, you help us to know, God, that you're right there with us, dear God. Help us, dear God, to meditate on your word, dear God. And see, God, that you are God. And God, everything that you allow us to go through, dear God, is for our good, dear God. God, we love you this morning. God, I ask you to look on those that are sick. Ask you, God, that you would touch and that you would heal. By those stripes, Jesus, you took them for our healing, and we said thank you. Those, dear God, that have loved ones that are incarcerated, God. God, I ask you that you would comfort. You would comfort, God. Give peace. Oh, God. Even that one that's incarcerated, God. God, I'm asking you to do something in their lives, God. Turn their hearts to you, dear God. Oh, God, you let them come to know you. And they, Lord and Savior, God, use them for your glory, God. God, I say thank you. Those that are in our bereavement, God, comfort, give peace. Dear God, we ask in you that you would dry those tears because your word says weeping may endure for a life on God. But joy will come in the morning. Restore that joy, God. Restore that joy, God. God, we love you today. And we give you thanks. In your son Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord as we prepare for our holy
this do in remembrance of me. After the same man also he took the cup. When he had some sin, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as long as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as long as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord death to be God. Wherefore, whoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that drinketh, sorry, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not deserting the body, Lord's body. By this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. When we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we chasten of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home. And you come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I sit in order. Afternoon. We humbly submit our prayer and supplication that you forgive us of our sins, that we might take and be a partaker of the Lord's Supper. We ask you to bless this bread that was the body of Christ and the wine that we the bread. God, as we pray this prayer, we pray it all.
Exposing the wine at this time. <clears throat> amen. And then he told his disciples, Amen. He told them to drink, drink of it. shed blood that you and I have the remission of our sin. First time as a body of believers, we come back together, amen, and have some function. We haven't had a picnic, and we haven't had a Christmas party, and over, this will be the third, this would have been the third year, amen, and I just didn't want to go into next year with us not having the time to take to fellowship with one another. So please, please come and bring a guest. That's Friday at 6.30 p.m., amen. And we're going to have lots of fun, amen, lots of fun, and lots of gifts, amen. And please, don't y'all forget, all of you, don't forget, the first gift, amen, the first gift you got to bring in for pastor, okay? <laughs> amen. Grace is an eternal Father. We thank you today, dear God. We thank you for your love, dear God. We thank you, dear God. 
for your word, dear God. And God, we thank you for this season, dear God. This season, truly, God, that your son, Jesus, is the reason for it. Jesus, we thank you for your birth. As you came through that version, Mary, just as the prophet Isaiah said, and as you died, and you rose the third day with all power in your hand, we thank you for your shed blood, for the forgiveness, the remission of our sin. And truly today we can declare that we are saved because we believe and know that God raised you from the dead. And we said thank you. Now God, I ask you to bless the offering. Multiply it. Yeah, let it be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. Bless those who gave to God and those who desire to give to God. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. What I say unto one, I say unto all. Watch, pray, live holy every day. And you are not alone.